In this example, we're going to be setting up an assembly line. Let's say that we're producing a product, could be maybe a shirt in a, in a clothing manufacturing plant, and uh, to assemble a shirt, we've got these separate work elements that need to be completed. Notice in this chart that element A has no immediate predecessor, so that's the first thing you're going to do on your assembly line. And that takes four minutes to complete. Likewise, B is coming out of A, so in order to work on work element B, A must be completed. And B takes two minutes. Likewise, C comes out of A, A must be completed before you start C, and that takes one minute. And D comes out of B, and takes five minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, it takes one minute. Um, e takes five minutes, F takes three minutes, and G comes out of C, E, and F and it takes four minutes. The first step that you're going to want to do is set up a precedence diagram like this. So the nodes represent the uh, work elements themselves and the arcs just represent the pre precedence relationships. So for example, B is coming out of A, C is coming out of A, and G is coming out of F, E, and C. So what you want to do is combine these then into workstations. Combine these, these jobs into workstations to set up your assembly line. So let's say you need to produce 120 units of this good, whatever it is, in a 10 hour day. The first thing we can calculate is the desired cycle time, C sub D. This is equal to the production time that you have available, the total production time, divided by the desired units of the output. So the time that we have available in a 10-hour day, of course, is 10 times 60 minutes in an hour. So we've got 600 minutes divided by 120 gives you 5 minutes is your desired cycle time. So another way to think about that is that's the time between the finished goods coming off the line. So every five minutes during a 10-hour day, you have to have this good coming off the line in order to reach your 120 units total for that day. The next thing we can calculate is the theoretical minimum number of stations, which is the capital N. This is just equal to the summation of the times divided by your cycle time your desired cycle time C sub D that we just calculated here. So notice we add up all the work elements and divide by 5. So 20 over 5 gives us 4. So theoretically, that's the minimum number of workstations we would need to get our desired cycle time so that we could produce 120 units in a day. So 4 stations is, is the best that we could hope for. But as it turns out, when we attempt to build this assembly line into workstations, because of the precedence relationships, this would be one possibility. A and C, total of 5 together. B and D is next, total of 3. E, total of 5. F, total of 3. G, total of 4. This would give us cycle time of, well, the desired cycle time of five, uh, five minutes, so every five minutes one would come off the line, but notice that we've got five workstations. We'd really like to get it down to four, but in this example problem it's impossible to get it down to four because of those precedence relationships. Here's another possibility. A could stand alone at one workstation, total of four, then B, total of two, and notice they'd be idle for a couple of minutes in between. D and F together, total of four. E, uh, total of five. C and G, total of five. So again, with this possibility, we've got a cycle time of five, so we'll be able to produce 120 in a day. However, we have five workstations. So we're not 100% efficient. There's a formula for efficiency. Efficiency is just the summation of the times divided by the actual number of stations and the actual cycle time multiplied together. So either one of these, well they're the same, 
The summation is, is 20 of all the times, as we saw before. We've got five workstations in both examples. And our actual cycle time is 5. So 20 over 5 times 5 is 20 over 25, or 80%. This assembly line is 80% efficient. It's not possible to get this down to 4 because of those precedence relationships. But if we could get it down to 4, then our efficiency would be 100%, because then this would be 20 over 4 times 5 is 20. 20 over 20 is 100%. But again, there's no way with this example to get it down to four workstations. The other thing that you might want to do is try spreading this out and, and getting the times approximately equal at each workstation. If we could get it down to, say, four at every workstation instead of five, that would be a more efficient line. But again, I don't, I don't think that's possible with this line because uh, E is five alone, so there's no way to get that down unless you broke this E operation into two parts of that work element and have two separate workstations. Then you'd have one going through every two and a half minutes. But that's the objective in designing an assembly line is try to get your efficiency level 